Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very special edition of ASAP Cafe. I'm really humbled because this is our 200th episode of ASAP Cafe. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. And sitting on my immediate left, we have the lovely Louise Bundy. She's been on this show off and on over the years, and she helped me write the script for that Lawrence Welk show we did back in 2014. And then further on my left, affectionately, our aging rocker, Emmett. Yep. <laughs> 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 we have some goodies here, not only on this set here with just the three of us, but anybody that pops yes. in and out throughout the taping. Mm -hmm. this. We have six hours of recording time, and I just may just let the camera run, even when we're done after mm -hmm. I sign off. Yep. Sure. Because mm -hmm. they, can, they can edit and fix right. it. Mm -hmm. right. Scott's really good at that. Mm -hmm. Scott will be popping in. Joe Baird, the general manager, will probably be popping in. And Neil, will, you'll pop in probably too, won't you, Neil, if you get a chance to say hi? Yeah, mm -hmm. so Neil is running both cameras yep. on this show today, so I'll start out. Uh, Emmett, do you want to start us off? Yes. <laughs> Heavenly Father, bless our show, our fasting on food, and our time together in this feast, in Jesus' name. I'm in agreement. I want to <coughs> just uh, thank Joe Barrett and the uh, MCAT studio for all these goodies. We have pizza yes. today and tree top for people who don't drink sodas. Yes. <laughs> These lovely cookies here. <laughs> and chips and stuff like that. And the, the younger kids will be in later on today. They'll mm -hmm. gobble all this stuff. Oh, yeah. So we old geezers might as well just enjoy oh, a slice or two. Mm -hmm. Hey, watch your calling the geezer. I, yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm just, this is going to be such fun. And this isn't going to be like your typical cafe. We're just going to just goof off. And yeah. Sure. Eat on camera. <coughs> Nothing to really talk about today. I'll play my traditional theme song. <coughs> but I still have allergies, folks. <laughs> it's that season. Yeah, it is. it is. Have you noticed the wasps are already out? Oh, yeah. No. You know, well, I have a little garden and that kind of thing. You know the paper wasps that do the paper nests? They're already out trying to get new nests and that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't like anything that has more than four legs or less than two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wasps, yes, insects, nothing. Yeah. We, I do love butterflies, though. They're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, they're okay. Yeah, I love they're butterflies, okay. but otherwise I don't like insects. No. The no. only other insect I like is like a praying mantis. They're cool. They're kind of interesting. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm not an insect fan at all. I yeah. certainly hate flies. Oh, I know. I used to have horses, so flies were... Yeah, I hate horse flies. What? Those, yeah. they're the worst. Yeah. They're eating You have to constantly spray the animals yeah. and wipe them down. And, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I love the horses, so... Oh, yeah, horses are wonderful. Yeah, they are. But I'm allergic to horse hair, too. Oh, no. Well, the doctor, last year, ran a, a full thing on my back, you know, we're in test for allergies. I'm allergic yeah. to... Outdoor grass, grass pollen. Um, I'm allergic to mold. I'm allergic to dogs and cats and horses. Oh, <coughs> And dust and all such a bad Yeah, dust and pollen. Yeah, oh. oh. my goodness. That must be miserable. Yeah. Springtime has got to be a nightmare for you. It is, it is. I love the beauty of springtime. Yeah, it's summertime, but. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep, it is a nightmare. Wow. Yep. Now, do you have to take a lot of medication? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. A lot of antihistamines and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. That's too bad. Oh, I sympathize. My. Yeah. Did I tell you about the time, and it even have a funny joke in it, too, the time that I was stung about a few years ago um, by a hornet? I oh. moved my other place. It's about 2009. Okay? It's about August. And I think the hornets were getting confused. I was asleep in my bed. It was about 4 a.m. in the morning. And I got to have a drink of water. And I went back down into my cover. And I was like, ow! Oh, my goodness. Mm. Did I just get hit by a tack or a <laughs> dagger? It felt like a dagger with fire. Like, oh. I looked at the sheets on my bed. It was a paper wasp. Oh. And I got stung in this arm. And I kept hitting it with a flight yeah. Come on. Then I got it outside. Mm. And I said to it, for, for, for funny's sake, just to you know, have some humor, 
a line from Star Trek. Do you remember a mock time mm -hmm. where they got really kind of confused with that, you know, yeah. strange disease? With where, the pompar. Like, yeah, well, yeah. not yeah, with the um, not pompar, but with the um, it induced it lowered their inhibitions and they acted crazy and everything. And remember, even Ensign Riley trade trade over the Enterprise and be captain. Oh right, <coughs> yeah, he was singing Kathleen. Yes, he had a line thing. Uhura. You um, um, interrupted my song. There'll be no ice cream for you tonight. <laughs> so what I did is said, Wasp, you stung me. That was very bad. There'll be no ice cream for you tonight after I've taken out some throat on the ground. Oh. <coughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. quite an episode. I'll take you home again. Oh, I love yes. that. Oh, my gosh. That was hilarious. Yes. You, um, Joel suggested an interesting thing. I Normally, I'm allergic to aspirin, but I can Something take like it that. topically. Oh. Because I felt so wiped out and exhausted from the venom, uh -huh. so just uh, crush an aspirin. He even gave me an aspirin. Put in a little water and make a paste out oh. of it over the wound, and to just suck up the poison. Oh, nice. Uh huh. Did it, did it work? <coughs> Good. Immediately. Good. Good. Well, I got stung <coughs> by a wasp once too, and I, I, I reached my hand in the bush, and something went. Oh. Yeah. And my uh, left, uh, yeah. my uh, left hand actually swelled for yeah. a few hours. It happened to my son when he was about six years old. He got, got stung, stung by a bee. Oh yeah, I've been stung by a bee. Up. Yes. That's what happened to me one time. It was 12 years old, and two saw me in the backyard, and I was barefoot, just in my pajamas, and oh, oh, I, no. did I, step on a, I stepped on a honeybee. Oh, my, oh, my foot swelled up, and yeah. Yeah, just, oh, that wow. hurt. Feeble Thank attempt you. at the bumblebee. Yeah. <laughs> These keys are fast enough to be doing uh, something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, Neil Diamond covered that, the bumblebee, yeah. Yeah, well, we're talking about oh, yeah. bees. Yes. Oh. Well, remember Neil Diamond, he did a song, Bumblebee, fly, is in the bumblebee tonight, or something or another, fly! what you're doing, yeah. I thought Neil Diamond wrote it. Oh. He, maybe he, he may have wrote that version yeah. of it. Yeah. Because that song was written by Rimsky Korsakov, right. the original Flight of the Bumblebee. Oh, I did not Russian, know that. He mm -hmm. was a Russian composer. Mm -hmm. So, And actually, the not the song, but the entire... It's an opera. Mm -hmm. I think ah. it's called The Sultan or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And Flight of the Bumblebees is one of the songs. Of the I've and also been stung by bumblebees. Yeah. Oh, didn't mean to interrupt you, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I got stung on the leg once. I was yeah. walking, cooling my horse out. One landed on my thighs. So, but it didn't, I didn't have much of a reaction to yeah. it. So well, one time I was mowing the lawn for my mother and stepfather mm -hmm. years ago. And I thought, man, the hornet... Um, something is stinging me in my back. I guess the flies are... Some insect is biting me hard. Huh, that's odd. I wonder what it was. I had run over a bumblebee nest oh, in the no. ground. Because they bore underground. Oh. I guess you guys didn't catch that. I'll do it again. <laughs> and, you know, it just kept stinging and everything. And then I was whoa! And then it landed here in my... Oh, and finally I was able to get away. But I felt horrible after that. Because oh, of venom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I'm uh, no fan of insects. Nor am I. Do you know that song by Chance Emmett? Nope. That's called I'm I'm Bringing Home a Baby Bumblebee. Interesting. <laughs> That's the name. <coughs> it's a, it, there was a giant eagle in the Looney Tunes cartoon. Oh. His mother was like, you know, all the other uh, younger eagles were like out flying. They wanted to go catch birds and uh -huh. things. And the one eagle didn't want to get out of the nest. <laughs> Why don't you at least go get a bumblebee? And she kicks yep. him out of the nest. Yeah. I'm bringing home oh, a baby yeah, that big, bumblebee. Yeah. <laughs> that big buzzard. Yeah, yeah and he yeah. got psyched out by Bugs Bunny. It was just so funny. Oh, Bugs is the man. I love Bugs yeah. Bunny. <laughs> he was all right, I guess. I never cared much for Looney Tunes. Oh, I laugh. love Looney Tunes. My favorite character so are the Animaniacs. They were okay. They're I've so seen them. I've seen them. It's okay. They're silly. That's why mm -hmm. I like. I like silly things. Mm -hmm. That's why I like. Same them. here, but they were okay. <laughs> yeah. I, saw, I like the feature one, the 20 minute feature called King Yako, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. where he uh, in, inherited the kingdom of Anvilania. Oh, I and don't remember it. He had to go and fight the guys in the next kingdom. <coughs> it was hysterical. I loved it. Interesting. Yeah, it was really, really good. Well, I remember even one time I saw a honeybee. I'd had a boombox, mm -hmm. and I was playing some music. The, the honeybee was trying to sting the boombox. <laughs> it was on the boombox where the music was playing. Uh -huh. Repeatedly tried to sting just out of instinct. And it wasn't attacking the bee. Uh -huh. 
They go by instinct, yeah. strictly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the vibrations yeah, from exactly. the Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, there's something. But they're so smart. Yeah, they are very intelligent. Yeah. And smart, too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Extremely intelligent, yeah. yeah. It's a whole society down mm -hmm. there. You know, you guys made me think of Ellen when she made her national debut on The Tonight Show. Uh -huh. She talked about insects. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, it was where she had a conversation with God, mm -hmm. and she calls heaven. Mm -hmm. Hello, Lord. This is Ellen. <laughs> Ellen. DeGeneres. DeGeneres, you know. Uh -huh. And it was just kind of, it was tastefully done. Huh. She says, God, I got a question to ask you. I know you made, like, um, cats and dogs and what have you, but what are the purpose of fleas? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. she was wondering what the purpose of fleas, Ooh. and the Lord says, well, there's people in the flea industry that uh, make a living, <laughs> get rid of fleas. Oh, I didn't think of it that way, God. Yeah, and it was just such a cute mm -hmm. little... Um, oh. Skit. Yeah. Did you ever see an image? Her, no, I never her did. Movie? It was very tastefully done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was rude, it, crude. It was oh, just sure, a simple. Sure. Well, you know, sometimes people get sensitive when you mention yeah. God, so right. you have to ask. Uh -huh. But it was just a conversation on the telephone. It had a, um, there was one part where the Lord said, Hold on, Ellen, I got to put you on hold. Somebody's at the gate. <laughs> you know, get ready to go to heaven. And, you know, just stuff like that. It was, it was interesting. Really funny. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm reading a book right now about rats mm. in New York City. Mm -hmm. About this guy who's doing a study of the habits of rats. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, actually. <coughs> <coughs> talks about the exterminators, and he talks about the, some of the history of, of how rats got there in the first place, where they came over on the ships with, yeah. with pilgrims and explorers yeah. and whatever. So I don't like rats. I worked with rat lab rats. I don't know anything about sewer rats or the big Norway they rats. They carry disease. They do. But the lab rats are very sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we used to have one, that big one named Charlie that used to run around uh -huh. the lab all the time. He'd carry him on our shoulders and yeah. stuff. <coughs> he was actually affectionate. Mm -hmm. But that's the only rats I've ever worked with. Yeah. Yeah, they carried bubonic plague all over Europe. Yeah, they did. Yep. They did. Wiped out, what is it, a third of the population yep. in Europe? Yep. Yeah. Jeez. <clears throat> I wonder if there's any any place that doesn't have rats. I don't know. I doubt that. I really yeah. doubt it. Maybe maybe Antarctica. Or yes. You know. Mm -hmm. or maybe some of the higher climates. In oh yeah. Climates in yeah. Canada, near the Arctic Circle. Yep. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. But he was talking about how they have adapted. I mean, if it wasn't for garbage, there wouldn't be rats because that's what they eat. Up. That's what they live on. Uh -huh. You know, and they put the garbage bags out behind restaurants mm -hmm. and whatever. Yep. They come and forage and they crawl along the walls and then they run out and get into a garbage bag, mm -hmm. you know. And the bigger ones uh, always survive because the little ones don't get as much food to eat as the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fascinating. It reminds me of the movie Willard. Remember that? Never thought. Oh, it's kind of creepy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing, such a lovely song, Ben, mm -hmm. by Michael Jackson, came uh -huh. out of that movie. That's strange, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I barely remember that. It was really? in the 70s, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, I seem to recall that. Yeah. But. I thought it was about his pet mouse, or pet rat it or something. It was a rat, yeah. yeah that he, he had was, a pet. Well, Ben was like the, the lead rat. That uh -huh. he, ben would like control mm. all the other rats. Oh. And this kid who had the pet rat would send him yeah. out to kill people or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was one of those like, mystery one. In, like, yeah, a, it was a horror kind of a horror mystery, horror yeah. Mystery I, I, I seem to recall that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I'm into a horror sci-fi kind oh, of yeah. stuff, so I mm -hmm. watch that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, it was yeah, a little creepy. I know, I where Especially I when you see them all scurrying. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's like watching roaches, mm -hmm. oh, I can't stand Oh, yeah, I hate them, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Horrible. Oh, these goodies are so good. Yeah. <laughs> always nice to munch. Mm -hmm. I can nosh my way through the entire day. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Just kind of thin crust, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah less calories. The mm -hmm. stuffed crust pizzas are good, but oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. a 500 calories of oh, slice. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So, I have to watch my girlish figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> oh. Watch my girlish figure. <laughs> 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 yeah. It gets harder when you get older. Mm -hmm. It gets harder when you get older. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm finding out. Yep. I'm 50 now. 
Well, you're just a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My youngest child is 15. Interesting. <clears throat> in shape so we don't age as fast mm -hmm. as you know, it's hard mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work mm -hmm. yeah yeah so. you heard that song in a while 18 in mind follow me yeah the dryer call <laughs> me in the dryer <laughs> <laughs> Can't think much of a song for that one. No. This time, yep. I first became acquainted with that song when I was a kid. Mel Torme made it famous, and my parents used to watch him on television, and it was a movie that he was actually singing that song. Oh, in. yeah? Some sort of a jazz movie, or mm -hmm. he was in some sort of a jazz club. Very mm -hmm. young, mm -hmm. Mel Torme. And he was singing that song. Mm -hmm. and, that, and I just still remember that image in my mind. He was pretty young. Who made world. it popular on Top 40, though? I want to say somebody like Astrid Gilberto or... Oh, no, she Peggy did uh, The Girl from Ipanema. She did Ipanema, I know yeah, that. Yeah, Astrid Gilberto. But yeah. it was a woman that recorded it. Wasn't hmm. Well, perhaps, but I associate it with Mel Torme mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. that became one of his signature songs. Ah. And uh, <coughs> you know what's interesting about Mel Torme? His career didn't really take off till he got into his 50s. Yeah, that's true. He was called The, Vel the, the, Velvet, the Velvet Boy, The Velvet Fog. Yeah. Because I saw some videos of him like in his 30s mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, he was doing some performances mm -hmm. and stuff, but he didn't hit his stride until he got into his right, 50s. Right, right. And that real I consistent. Think I remember him with, without gray hair. Yeah. You know? Yeah, when he got in his 50s and his hair turned gray, yeah. he just soared. Yeah, he did. But he had that young, handsome look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was probably up against like Sinatra and all yeah. those other. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Perry Como and. Right. Um, Frankie Lane yeah. and oh, all those kind of people. I know. So Tony Bennett. Yeah. Oh my gosh. When they were young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tony Bennett though, look at him. He's in his eighties. No, he's ninety now. Is he ninety? Yeah. Oh, and he's still growing strong. It's amazing. Yeah, he, he talks about how blessed he is. Yeah. Sinatra called him the greatest singer in history. Uh, yeah, I can see. If why. Sinatra says that yeah, about you, there really must mm -hmm. be some yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, he I just cut an album with Lady Gaga not too long ago. Yeah, you know the, the sales on that album, Sword? That was on the world news. Yeah. Because Lady Gaga comes from a, a jazz family. Oh. So that would explain why she can sing jazz so right, well. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's great. It's just you want to make money. <laughs> you got to sing rock and roll. Oh, I was just telling right. Emmett that when we were talking about WKRP Cincinnati. That oh, was yeah. yeah. That. They just put it back on They the were playing, yeah. They were, that's why I did a story on Lonnie Anderson oh, yesterday. Okay. okay. Uh, it's an AM station that um, they had a new general manager, and Andy's character. Right, right. And he was trying to save the radio station, so he takes out the easy listening music right. and replaces it with rock, rock and roll. Yeah, against, yes. yeah <laughs> against all the uh, general manager's advice right. and so on to save the station. Yeah. Lonnie Anderson's character, Jennifer, she's like the smartest right. one and then the most highest paid employee of the radio station. Mm -hmm. So that was funny. Yeah, she right. always saved him out of predicaments of oh, radio yeah. station and everything. Yeah. She just solved everything. Oh, I know. And the characters were very well defined. You know, mm -hmm. the Celeste Nesman, mm -hmm. Venus Flytrap, and right. Johnny Fever. Venus did the uh, soul music. Right. And Nesman had the bow tie. And the news, yes. <laughs> Nes Nesman and the news. <laughs> oh, Excuse yeah, me. it was funny. But yeah, they were kind of like bumbling characters. Right. It, it, that, it was just kind of it's funny a great for show, that time. Yeah. Yeah. I never watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. It was, it was 1978, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <coughs> when that that's show came out. 40 on. years ago. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah, Lonnie Anderson is 72 now. Oh, okay. She's just a kid. <laughs> she had to have been uh, that video I showed you earlier. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, just the timing must have been perfect. Right, uh, right. I didn't do that story on her today just because of. MTV, but I mentioned MTV at the uh -huh, end of it because uh -huh. she does the spokes oh, okay. thing for, for not only that show, but a couple other shows that uh -huh. they said that she's... MTV? Doing. Not MTV, MeTV. Me oh! I'm sorry, did I say MTV? I yeah. meant to say MeTV. Yeah, she does the promo. Yeah. Yeah, so memorable entertainment television. Yeah. Yes. Name. Ironically, it was MT MTV that got me into punk rock. Oh, yeah? They used to have a wonderful show... I'm not really a big fan of MTV, especially mm -hmm. now when it's just reality TV. Oh, well, it's it? changed now, but it's not, MTV's not what MTV it's was. It's not music anymore? No, it's not, hardly, oh. no. Everything's more reality these days. Oh, I hate reality. Same, Same here. Too. That's why when I wanted to do those news stories, I didn't want to do reality yeah. style. Yeah. They used to have a... That somebody's holding hands on a beach. 
oh, look at that. She's got a little tummy here. And yeah. Oh, there, no. There's nothing informative in those stories to me. Yeah. It's like, who cares? Yeah. yeah. Well, apparently Nobody's somebody a, must care because they do. it's... People are nosy. <laughs> well, I guess. Yeah, I just, I don't, you know, after living in Los Angeles for 44 years, you get so used to being around celebrities, you know, you see them everywhere, and yeah. it's like no big deal. You're just yeah. like ordinary yeah. people. Ordinary people. Yeah. They're probably like, I'm sick of the camera in my face, and I'm the sure. next man cool to you, I'm going to bop him. <laughs> yep. No kidding. Well, they used to have a show on MTV called 120 Minutes, <laughs> Sunday night from 10 to midnight. Uh -huh. <clears throat> a friend of mine introduced it to me. I asked him, you know, on MTV, are there any strange videos or any shows with odd, strange, surreal videos? And he said, there's one show that I cannot figure out, MTV's 120 Minutes, and asked, the music or the lyrics or the videos themselves? And he said, both. Hmm. The music or the video? He said, both. Hmm. So I wanted to go watch this. Yeah. I fell in love with it. They had a lot of new wave bands and punk rock stuff. And they even, I think, mentioned the punk wars, like the Sex Pistols and some mm -hmm. others. And I started collecting some of the bands, you know, that they were featured on 120 Minutes, including even Nine Inch Nails and oh, some yeah. others. Yeah. A ministry, you know, um, the Smiths, the Cure, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Finally, I found a punk rock dress from this old um, a, a tape of um, the Sex Pistols, a rare one I got from a secondhand store. We've come for your children. And that took off. I would never have been a punk rocker if I had not watched MTV's 120 oh. Minutes. Well, MTV, uh, when it first came out, it's different, you know, yeah. than what it is today. They had a show called Friday Night Videos. Do you remember that? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, and that was sort of like MTV. That was like pre-MTV, yeah. I believe, if I remember that right. Mm -hmm. So I used to watch that too, Friday Did night you? videos. Yeah, I, I used to watch they that also every had Friday to see what the newest <laughs> videos were at the time. Oh yeah. They also had Headbangers Ball. Do you remember Headbangers Ball? Saturday night from nine to midnight. I'll be dying. Hmm. Just heavy metal oh, music, yeah. and you know, Metallica, Guns N' Roses, oh, wow. that mm -hmm. kind of thing, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and other rock bands I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. Even some Aussie stuff. Just and they had interviews, you know, with some of the heavy metal people like Motorhead and others. Uh -huh. Love Motorhead. And I was saying with 120 Minutes, they would have interviews with certain people in the new wave or punk rock industry and that kind of thing. Just, I loved it. Yeah, and that mm -hmm. broke my ground for an interest in heavy metal rock music too. It was Headbangers uh, Ball. Oh, okay. Now, I like some heavy metal. You know, oh, I yeah. I like Led Zeppelin and some Guns N' Roses yeah. and stuff like that. You, know, you like Metallica? Some stuff. Not everything, you know, but a few things. Yeah. You know. How about Cannibal Corpse or Sepultura or Napalm Death? I haven't heard them. <laughs> Very fast, very growly, just uh, so fast, and yeah. the song, like, from, um, uh, what is it, not Sepultura, Napalm Death, like, twists the knife slowly, oh, and then yeah. he, just so violent, but it's really extreme. Oh, I love it. Uh, yeah, it's either funny. that, or Neil Diamond, or John Denver. Oh, wow, what a, dec what a difference. Yes. Can you imagine Neil Diamond, or let's say John Denver, even, John Denver touring with Cannibal Corpse? No, I can't. That would be a concert to see. <laughs> Well, you never know. You know, when they do those little mixing stuff like that, yeah. it, it can work. Like the the Lady Gaga and uh, yeah. Tony Bennett. Of course, yeah. you know, um, John Denver's dead now. Yeah. Well, yeah, of oh, course. Yeah, but but yeah I can't I, imagine. I do. He's too much of a country boy. Yeah. You know? Well, what about that concert he did with Frank Sinatra? That was different. That was wonderful. I didn't even know that. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John Denver and oh. Sinatra, they performed together. Yeah. Well, it was a little, a little unusual. Not in a them. bad sense. Right. It's, it's like mixing Hank Williams with... Uh, the blind Alabama boys. Or something. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that's a crude analogy, that would but be interesting. yeah. So that's kind of what that concert was like uh -huh. with uh, Denver and Sinatra. Uh huh. More of a middle-aged Sinatra and a young. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John Denver. Yeah. I never got into punk rock. I was older. Yeah. When it started. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I was like 22 years old. Yeah. When I, was, so. mm -hmm. I got into it when I was 25, 22, about that same age. Yeah, I would have been. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd have been in my 40s by then. Yeah. So it was not my thing. Yeah. I love jazz, love classical, yeah. love rock, yeah. and I love some top 40. Yeah. You know? I didn't get into punk rock until early 1990 or 89 or so, and then I went punk in 93. Oh, okay. You know? That was a late bloomer because I was just a kid when the punk rock movement oh, just started. You know, like right. the Sex Pistols and right. the Ramones, and I love the Ramones. Uh -huh. I love the Ramones. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've heard some of the songs, but just didn't yeah. catch me. Oh, yeah. And then I was into jazz. When it came to, like, the 80s, I was mm -hmm. into jazz. Totally. Do you like smooth jazz, then? I do. Yes, I love I smooth do. jazz. I have a lot of smooth jazz. In fact, I've used a lot of smooth jazz for my ballet class. Wonderful. I used it for the ballet bar. Wonderful, yeah. Yeah, because I have a lot of, like, foreplay. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Boney James. I love Boney yeah. James. 
kind of reminds me of office music or on hold music if uh -huh. you're on the phone and we appreciate your business at yeah. coca-cola please um please stay on the line and a representative will help you your uh -huh. estimated time of, of wait time is to speak to a representative is four minutes yeah. and they have the smooth they jazz the in the back yeah. i love that yeah you know? yeah I just, there was a smooth jazz station in la called the wave uh -huh. and it was 24 7 station and wonderful the music was fabulous wonderful yeah I, like i said i have a lot of their albums there's a smooth jazz channel on m not MTV. Music Choice on cable, Charter Cable. Oh. It's 943, 24 hours oh, for smooth jazz. Nice. And some other stuff like heavy metal and toddler tunes mm -hmm. and easy listening. Yeah, you can get it on Slacker Radio on your phone too. Yep. Yeah. 942 is Soundscapes. It's a new age, mellow like um, George Winston and oh, okay. William Ackerman oh, type of okay. thing. Have you ever heard of them? Mm -hmm. I have. George Winston. I'm going to sit in here with you guys a little bit too. Uh, okay. Well, you know, George Winston is coming to town. Oh, he is. Mm -hmm. Um, May 27th. Hmm, what's it going to be? It's going to be at the Wilma. Really? Yep. I didn't hear about that. Yep, either. he's coming. Yep. Huh. Wow. The loud bands are coming here. Doobie Brothers and Stephen yeah. Dan are mm -hmm. coming. Yeah. I already got tickets. I hope I don't get sick or anything because the tickets are irrefundable. Oh. But <laughs> I'm not, folks, I'm not saying go buy tickets. I'm not plugging products. <laughs> I'm just saying he's coming to town. Cool. Well, I'm sure there'll be a lot of fans here in Missoula that are going to appreciate that concert. Yeah. So. Yeah. I wonder why there's no steady jazz on the radio here. Uh, probably because uh, this is a big city like Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> like WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah, that's you know? true. That's true. It's like, oh, God, it's so nice to drive. Like, I played nothing but CDs in my car. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no jazz on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, you guys make yourself at home. I'm going to see who's out here and uh, get some more guests on here. Okay. <clears throat> Just to make yourself at home. Sounds good. <laughs> mm hmm. All right. Some of you always liked music. Mm -hmm. you grew up with it. Yeah, me too. My father yep. was a jazz musician, uh -huh. tenor sax. It was a little Lionel Hampton for mm -hmm. a little while. And then my mom played piano, and my uncle played trumpets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody. Would you, you want to hear for a moment? Yeah. Yeah. I've never cared for regular jazz, just smooth really? jazz. Yeah. Oh, I liked. I also like big band jazz. Yes, that's good too. Count that's very Basie good. And, mm -hmm. and well, one, I remember one in a past show we did, we had a. Uh, John Fattos, you know, the African American trumpeter screams the high heaven. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We like to drove toward him at crazy <laughs> mm -hmm. screaming trumpets. Yeah, Remember right. that episode mm -hmm. we did on the cafe? <laughs> I picked the loudest, highest screaming trumpet song I could oh think of. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for him. We had that camera. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just screaming. Like Maynard Ferguson. That? Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, I would have. I didn't think of Ferguson. Yeah. I just thought of John Fattos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Ferguson album. 1961 Maynard Ferguson album at home. Yeah, he was an amazing uh, trumpeter. Yeah. Ferguson. He yeah. just—he was just one of those people that was able to hit these outrageous high notes. I know. Like, I think he could scream higher than John Fattis. Really? You know? Maybe. Yeah. I—I I don't think anybody screamed as high as Maynard did in, 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 in all the years. Yeah. Because I saw Ferguson in concert when oh, I was in wow. high school. Our band. Nice. We went to see him. He came to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. You can have a seat next to uh, Louise. Hey. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Okay. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Maynard Ferguson, mm -hmm. yeah, the trumpeter. Jazz yeah, I know Maynard. Yeah, yeah I, uh, our, our band went to see him. Oh, cool. yeah, our band went to see him when I was a sophomore in high school. Oh. He sent us home deaf. <laughs> deaf <laughs> and smiling. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I think I just have one album. Okay. You know, when you're young, you go deaf, your hearing comes back I under know. Yeah, he was pretty uh, high pitched. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Maynard was I really feel bad for the trumpet players in oh. the jazz band who had to play. Maynard Ferguson. Really? Yeah. And if you don't know Maynard Ferguson, you might recognize him more from the song Country Road. Oh? His more titular song. Well, some mm -hmm. of his. That a lot of people know from his days. It's Country Road, it's bum, ba da da, bum, bum, ba bum, bum. Okay. And some of, and some of uh, his, some of his early words like primal scream. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't remember that song? Yeah, I do. Well. I just hadn't heard it in a while. Oh, Country Road. No, yeah, I was thinking of the more earlier works. Uh, oh, right. Some of his earlier works, Primal Scream and uh, Conquistador, mm -hmm. where he screams like notes way past the yeah. double C. Yeah. And stuff like that. It's incredible. He was. Yeah, they used him on the monkeys too. The they monkeys. did. Well, uh -huh. the soundtrack, yeah. Huh. You know, whenever you hear that, like when the monkeys are performing yeah. such a song, you hear that screaming oh. trumpet. That was the person they used in the back. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, Scott and I did a story. I think we did a story on Maynard mm -hmm. yeah. a few years back. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, and they were wearing those 70s outfits. 
Oh, yeah. The Mike Douglas show is screaming these titles. So, I heard a rumor that you want to take a little time off from Aesop Cafe after this episode. I was thinking about that just so I can focus on the news stories and <coughs> work on that talk show I've been mm-hmm. playing around with. Maybe put it on a hiatus for like a month or two. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this show for almost four years. Wow. Has it been that long? Yes, yeah, nonstop. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to take a little break. Yeah. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I haven't made the final decision. I'll mm-hmm. let you know as far as putting on a hiatus for a month or two. Mm-hmm. Just a rest. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and I and I, uh, I, you guys know I got to apply for Good Morning America, so yeah. I want to get a bunch of those stories under my belt in case that door opens. That's a good idea. You know, yeah. you never know. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good idea. It was Scott's idea. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I turned it down when he first asked me. <laughs> well, I did. Well, the reason I turned it down was because. You didn't know yeah. what it was going to look like until we did it. No, like, why no, not? no, it wasn't And then bad. he looked at it, and then he, then he just kept, like, oh, I got five stories this time. <laughs> oh, this week, oh, I've got, like, 20 stories. If well, you do no, 20 I stories just... in one day, like, okay, is that so, uh, I... Actually, I didn't think I was going to be able to repeat that again after all that those stories I did on Wake Up. Right. I did 350 yeah. stories on did your show. You? Yeah, I have it in chronological order. Wow. I checked the record. Mm-hmm. How many episodes? 350 stories I did on your show. And, oh. did, and then, of course, you did more it. episodes, too, than that. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I've got that all chronicled, and I have all the DVDs at home, so they're all in chronological order. Wow. You mean Wake Up Missoula? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Scott's yeah. show. My show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I start, the history of Scott's show, as far as me, I, my first appearance was August, August 2014. Mm-hmm. It was August 4th, actually, mm-hmm. when I had that green outfit on. Mm-hmm. Remember that? And then a couple of weeks later, um, Scott Noel asked me to just play in the background. Mm-hmm. There was no... Stories at that time. Okay. For me, I was just kind of like, "Hey, as long as you last." Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was kept doing it. I, I was going to commit to. I, I decided to commit to that mm-hmm. when they asked me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in February 2015, Noel came up with the idea for um, doing uh, musical notes with ASAP. Just tell a story. Mm-hmm. And my early stories are really cheesy and primitive. <laughs> yeah. Get used to it. But yeah, I did 350 wow. stories from the time. Yep. And of February course, your all-time favorite, I believe, was um, Mark Goddard. No, yeah, no, it, it was it was the one guy. And it was the one gal. Um, I can't remember her name. Sally Field. Mm-hmm. Love Sally Field. Oh um, yeah, that was Noel's favorite. Was your, I believe. Well, no, it was your favorite. <laughs> well, yeah, that because that, that was your number one. You did your Aesop top yeah, ten, was, and yeah, you literally was, just yeah. Because I did uh, top ten for 2015 and top oh. ten for 2016. Okay. Yeah, so Sally Field was number one. Yeah. yeah. 2015, yeah. and Barbara Bain, the actress oh, yeah, on Mission sure. Impossible, was Boston. the top one. Yeah, Mount Land was one. Yeah. What else? Um, you also, yeah, Julie Andrews, you have a huge crush oh, on yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we talked about Julie. But no, that was a good experience for mm-hmm. me. I, mean, I don't have a journalism degree, and I told mm-hmm. Noel that, so just telling these stories, I just tell them the way I interpret yeah, them. Yeah, sure. Based on the Wikipedia and the, right. the IMDB biography page and mm-hmm. other biography stuff mm-hmm. info I can get. Yeah, me and Noel have a journalism degree. I'm... I, I'm not really doing journalism. I'm mostly just doing like tech and camera and whatever mm-hmm. stuff yeah. here and there. I do my morning show, and other than that, I just kind of briefly go over news things. But I'm not really utilizing like news kind of deals. And like, and everybody died. <laughs> <laughs> More at eleven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was a good experience for me doing those stories. Oh, sure. Yes, I did 350 stories wow. on Scott's show. I didn't realize it was that many. Yeah. And I didn't either. It just doesn't seem like it. Like this show here, it doesn't seem like it's 200. 200, I know. This is a 200 ASAP Cafe. I always think that like ASAP would be like a good uh, host for like a kid show more yeah. than anything else. Like he's very, he works really well with kids. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be really cool. Like if maybe we, do if we move did into a, a library. Show, mm-hmm. yeah. If we do like go to the library, maybe mm-hmm. we can do like a, a children's type of deal because they always yeah. have a tiny tales and story mm-hmm. time at the Mission Public Library, which teach kids how to read. Mm-hmm. I, I would love to do that. Yeah. You know, and just get into that when that time comes. Mm-hmm. That'd be kids. great. Well, I used to do children's television when I was in California years oh. ago too. I used to do a show called the What If Show. Mm-hmm. It was. It didn't last very long. Really? You, know, you know, when people are trying to. Was it like out. a pirate? Uh, I mean, not a pirate, but a pilot. pilot yeah. yeah, you might say that. I think it only aired about three or four times, and oh, then it faded. Really? Yeah. Oh. And this was around the time when J.C. Dugard was kidnapped in real life. Oh. What, about 30 years ago, or however long it was, huh. when that came out. The premise of that show was, what if? What if this happened to your child? What if? You know, oh. It was that kind of uh-huh. a children's. And that was before we knew that this was going to happen. Yeah. 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 J.C. Dugard. Now we kind of put a damper on things. J. 
Yeah, it, yeah. that kind of killed that show yeah. too when that happened. Yeah. But then you could do a show like that and not just you know do it for precautionary things like mm -hmm. what if your child was kidnapped or something like that. Well, that was kind of what they were saying. What, what I if you saw a purple that. purple rhinoceros? You know, or you know, like mm -hmm. get into some of the things that a kid <laughs> might. Imagine. Yeah. You know, uh, mm -hmm. what if your father got stolen by by a dinosaur? You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, when that time comes, I'd be happy to do that. But getting back to the other thing, yeah, 350 stories on Scott's mm -hmm. show, and uh, today, the Lonnie Anderson story, that's technically 15 stories, wow. 15 ASAP Avenue stories yeah. that I've done. Wow. Yeah, it's just growing. It is. So I, I kind of want to focus on that a while mm -hmm. and just let that build. Mm -hmm. Give me a chance to rest in the cafe mm -hmm. and yeah. get my brain cleared so when we start doing it again, I'll yeah. have some fresher ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, mind um, it says if you're taking a break from the piano, do you want me to play the piano a bit or not? You want to go ahead, I'll sit here. Emmett played some tunes last time. Hell yeah. Oh. Well, a few times ago, yes. Oh. Unless you want to go back to playing the piano again. No, 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 for a couple no, of spells. no. Let me just get this watch. I'll keep track of time. <laughs> I'm going to sit right here yeah. next to Yeah, one time I did guest host their show. Twice. Oh. Or three times, maybe. Oh, yeah, I yeah, don't really remember. Might have been three times, yeah. Well, we'll let you uh, host in a moment, too. Uh, not that much of a host. Yeah, it was something he was playing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I want to get these stories ahead because I want to have that on my resume and have it prepared just yeah. in case that door opens. Sure, sure. You never know. It took like seven months to get that opportunity with Good Morning America. You know, I kept sending info yeah. and ABC kept sending me junk. Yeah. There was no... No point of contact. It was no physical mailing address. It was nothing. I just had to send it to abc.com. Yeah, you have to be persistent. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Some seven months later, they finally contacted me and said, here is a literal physical address. Right. Yeah. So they sent me the address to Good Morning America and ABC News in New York. Good. I was telling Scott, if I luck up and get that job, um, I don't believe in luck, but if I get it, we can just maybe do stories here and just have sure. it sent there. Sure. Because with the technology we have, they oh, can make yeah. it look like I'm right there. Exactly. You know, exactly. cut through ASAP segment. Right. I just said I'll give it two years. I'll yeah. give it two years sure. and see if it actually sure. happens. And you know, there are no overnight successes. Right. Yeah. There are none. You know, everybody has yeah. to work at it. And nowadays, it's, it's even worse if you are an overnight deal. Because mm -hmm. it's like, once you go overnight, then you're it's, it's, expectation, it's like yeah. the expectation for the next oh, thing is just so as high. high. Yeah. And most people never reach that because yeah. I always just have kids um, nowadays who are just like, I want to be internet famous. Mm -hmm. I want to be YouTube famous. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And I, then I always ask them for what? And then, <laughs> then they shut off. It's like, they don't know what they want. I, like, I just want to be famous. For yeah. what? <laughs> like, America is really funny because it's, it is the land of opportunity. But it's also oh. a lot of perspectives are like I want to be somebody, mm -hmm. but I just don't know what I have to do to be that right. somebody. Right, that's true. That's that's the biggest thing that yep. a lot of kids are missing is like how. Uh -huh. They know what they want, but they yeah. don't know how to get there. Right. Well, I, I'm it's not sure I know how to get people. there either. It's just kind of trial and error when I send stuff off. Yeah. But you know, I don't have a journalism degree. I feel like I got some experience not only through Scott Noel, but. Mm -hmm. This MCAT to just at least tell stories. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm never gonna be no Walter Cronkite. <laughs> no. I'm never gonna like cover moon stories, right. going to the moon or <laughs> Mars or yeah. anything yeah. like that. Then you hear all these stories about. Um, I think one of the um, bigger things is that um, people know each other and just like, oh, you know this one person. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know this one person. <laughs> and you tell stories and they're just like, hey, you seem like a pr pretty uh, decent person, De mm -hmm. decent fella. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's usually like you gotta find something that they know because mm -hmm. something it's like conversations. Well, it was kind of Noel's idea as far as uh, but it's the, hard. Yeah, yeah, the format of the stories that was kind of Noel's idea. Mm -hmm. I just said I didn't want to do reality stories. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's why I focus only on awards and contributions, sure. and I think it works. Yeah. It may not. I may never be like Ken Burns or get a yeah. thirteen oh, twenty awards, oh, yeah. but, yeah. but I do enjoy. <laughs> I, enjoy yeah. I enjoy. I enjoy telling those stories. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh yeah, Ken Burns just. And Loves Scott's me giving me a lot of incentive, Oh, yeah. I mean, too, his you know. big thing was Civil War. Oh, Boy, that's what got yeah. me started. Yeah. It, it was the <laughs> yeah. Ken Burns effect, they call it yeah. now. It the, you know, like the whole kind of slow motion thing. I like, use that with ASAP now. Like, a lot <laughs> yeah. of the old pictures that we just find online that uh -huh. we just use for a yeah. show. Cool. That we just do a nice little slow pan across yeah. the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Probably should credit all the people who have those, who actually took those photos yeah. rather than just taking them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but for right now, nice. we're, I'm, we're just making the thing. Mm -hmm. And it would probably take, just, uh, like, way longer 
couple hours to find the right people. It was like, Steve Smith oh, took yeah. this picture. Well, Roger at Clemens. least, uh, <laughs> at least uh, ABC took the Bob Barker story. Yeah, mm-hmm. good. They did. And really? They took, ABC? I thought that ABC, CBS they did. Yes, is the. Well, I know. Uh, yeah, but they did. And they also took the ABC story that you and I did on uh, Jim McKay and ABC White World mm. Sports because they had the ABC logo on it. Remember that one? Oh, nice. so I, I sent that one. Good. A literal DVD, both of those. Good. I sent two of those. Each to Good Morning America and then ABC News. I sent so I sent out four DVDs total. Right. So. Wow. Did they air it? I don't know. Mm. I if 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 I don't hear in two years, I probably never yeah. will. But it just only happened about a month ago. Oh well, so. yeah. If you yeah. suspend the show for two months, will if it'll go under rerun or what? I don't know. I, I'll make the decision on that soon. Yeah. Right now, I just want to party on this. Well, <laughs> well Lori always <laughs> wants new programs, and if you don't have a new program, then she just won't have it on the air for a little while. Yeah. But well, I'm only going to take a two-month hiatus if I decide to do yeah, that just yeah. for the summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, summer, me a, summer months, you know, it's, to I mean, me like, I'm going to be taking some time off in the summer, too. Yeah, and once I, all my I just, I just want to clear my head. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, I, yeah. I have just basically have most of, the uh, most of, like, the last week of May and the first couple weeks of June are, like, kid-free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to do that to, like, actually enjoy some time. Mm-hmm. And, like, I yeah. like working with kids, but mm-hmm. also I don't like working with kids. <laughs> and also yes. I, I'm moderate. It's, mm-hmm. it's like you, you can't work with kids too much. And, you know. and if I do yeah, the show again, maybe wait till so this fall, like September, and start the cafe again in September or something, and oh, I'll decide yeah, to do that. Go. Go. Oh, do you have a you have dance studio? I used to oh. in L.A. Yeah, I had it for 10 years. And I started it at two, having a, a room full of two-year-olds, like having a room full of puppies. Yeah. 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 Right. But they did their baton twirling and their little tap dances and stuff. And they did on you know shows and we did recitals and stuff and they were fine. <laughs> well, yeah, my uh, my niece is uh, four. Per, I don't know if she's four now or mm-hmm. she already turned four, mm-hmm. but uh, she, her her mom, my sister, wants her to get into ballet. Uh, yeah. I'm just like, well, maybe it's yeah. it's a huge maybe. Like yeah. I mean, like and, and like I told her, like if she wants to do it. But then again, it's like, you know, you have a four-year-old. You don't know what a you lot know, of kids you, want. You take them and you, and you let them try a class if they like it. Fine. If they don't, you take them home. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. easy. Yeah. That's what I used to do. Let the parents there stay. There used to be uh, definitely a lot more, like, try, trial and error type yeah. deals because it was a lot of, uh, like, you Rocky Mountain School of Ballet here mm-hmm. in uh, Missoula. Yeah, it's a great school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the biggest problems is that when you sign up for a commitment, you're committed for, like, six months. Oh, dear. And yeah. it's like, you have to be there for six months. What if your kid doesn't like it exactly. after two or three times? It's oh, like, this was yeah. fun the first time, but... Um, now my feet are getting sore, right. and I'm just like, I don't like feeling this way. Yeah. And it's, yeah. I mean, because it, for kids, it's very cut and dry. It's oh, like, sure. if this gives me pain, I don't want to do this. Yeah. But is that pain that what ends up making you? Uh, but they don't understand the whole don't concept that. of pain no, and gain. No, yeah. no, the no. gain that they get from the pain. Mm-hmm. So they, yeah. Yeah, it's easy for a kid to give up. Sure, if it hurts. They don't or like the it. long hours, like playing the piano, for example. Yeah, yeah. I used to do student teaching, and kids. Will be all excited because they think they're going to be Liberace in like two <laughs> lessons. Yeah. Right. And they don't realize they got to practice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then they rather go out and play baseball than sure. practice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dance is a little bit different because you can't have fun in a dance class, yeah. especially with you know like a two to four year old class. Yeah. And I never had anybody. There's no contracts, no terms. You yeah. just you can take one lesson at a time and pay for that, or you can take it a month at a time. That's you know, whatever. And it was open enrollment all yeah. year long. But there are also great things here in the downtown area, like Downtown Mass Collective. Um, yeah. I'm not plugging them, but. <laughs> Um, um, but they do have a couple like special days where people can just come down and do oh, like yeah. dance, contemporary dance, exactly. um, ballet, <laughs> hip hop, that kind of right, thing. Just a lot right. of different types of styles. Sure. Yeah, my boyfriend and I wanted to do salsa yeah. classes there. So, oh know. yeah. Yeah, because I had a salsa teacher at my studio, and it is so much fun. And the music is amazing, so I yeah. love Latin music. When I was in college, they, had, they always had Salsa Night at, uh, they, um, they didn't do it at downtown, downtown Dance, but uh-huh. they used to have it at Elks Lodge. Oh, okay. Salsa? This, like salsa? salsa dancing oh. on the second floor, like wow. every, like, I think it had, like, it was like a once a week deal every, like, Tuesday or Wednesday nice. night at Elks Lodge, uh-huh. and they just have salsa dancing. Oh, that's great. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I always think of Celia Cruz. You and oh, I did a story yeah. on her back in, I think it was 2015. Yeah, she's the queen of Celia. salsa. Yeah, uh, when I was on Scott's show, we're talking about how she got started. She used to win cakes oh. in Cuba. <laughs> was she the one with the fruit on her head? No, no that was Carmen, was, uh, Miranda. Carmen Miranda. <laughs> no, the other Spanish lady, the one that uh, she and her husband fled. Right. Yeah. Castro's rule at yeah. the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I and, just read uh, a book called The Mambo Kings, and it mm. talks about a lot of the uh, Latin artists, uh, Tito Puente and Pres Prado yeah. and Mango Santa Maria, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. 
great. Anyway, I have records. I listened to those guys when I was a kid. So oh, like my Chris Perrano, he was this guy. Uh, he sang this. He just the high energy, you know. Yeah. He played this song yeah. called Cherry Pink and Apple Cherry Pink Blossom and Apple Blossom. Blossom. And he would like yeah. play this trumpet solo and bend this one note yeah. at the beginning and then come back up and start playing. Yeah, it, it was a cha cha. Yeah, and it's, like, it's like the kind of music that kind of spans out of like jazz. Yeah. Because you know? it's very just like, it's constant, mm -hmm. but like w the, uh, when they, they, they end the song when they feel like it. Right. They're just like, <laughs> and then yeah. they just look at each other, I, bum, I bum, bum, we're bum, done. bum, 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 Yeah, that's it. Always yeah. like, I know, but the rhythms are infectious. Oh, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. In fact, Salsa Loca, the local salsa oh, yeah. around here, they're very good. They're really good. Because they're very I, good. The, their uh, trumpet player was my old high school band wow. teacher. He, uh, yeah, he can hit the really high notes yeah. um, oh, with well. the trumpet. Uh -huh. okay. um, yeah, he, he would put Maynard. Uh, but of course, he loves Maynard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I guess he, 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 could, he could probably yeah. challenge him pretty well because oh, he's wow. really good. He's uh, very disciplined. But also, um, I really like how his neck really expands because, like, the muscle in his neck. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, but a lot of trumpet. people just, you know, no matter what, how good they are, they don't have that ability for high notes. Yeah. Yeah. Only a handful of people yeah, can really true. do that. And that's then you true. meet people uh, like, of course, trumpet is one of those instruments you really can't play when you are a certain age because uh, your embouchure is just ruined if you've been mm. playing your whole life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's why they, a lot of them have like six different embouchures rotating from top, bottom, top, bottom, top, oh, bottom, wow. top, bottom. Yeah. And like I've been to a couple clinics at the university and most of the old guys, like I saw Buddy DeFranco before oh. he died. Uh -huh. um, and basically uh, the older players like play like trombone, mm -hmm. bigger brass instruments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, he's ninety, he still played the oh. uh, the clarinet um, back like back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um and saxophone players yeah. like mm -hmm. in the eighties. Yeah, my father blew his teeth out playing tenor sax, yeah. But it's yeah. so crazy because um, I know some people who like who like who practice a lot of saxophone player playing and mm -hmm. it's really funny because if you play saxophone such a long time, mm -hmm. your face freezes. Oh. So you your poker face. So oh, if you have like yeah. a poker tournament right after, so you practice for like two hours, your face is unable to express emotions because you're you work out your muscles and right. you have to have like a a very That's strong true. face. That's true. Yeah. 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 Wow. But I guess Dizzy is the exception. Well, yeah, but he's one person out of. Uh, <laughs> so, well, wasn't he told not to do that? Yeah, he, he was. Like, he was. You, should, you can't he, play like I that. Know, he well, was. he did. Yeah. <laughs> he got away with it too. He was long, it. Honestly, probably his lung capacity was like twice the average sure. because of all the wasted air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've wow. been trying to play this song on the piano and the instruments since I heard it in Lewiston, Idaho, just before I had to move in 1984. Uh -huh. You know this song. It was originally. As if I've told the audience this before in another cafe, mm -hmm. I heard on Albertsons in Lewis to Idaho just before I had to move away, uh -huh. a beautiful song of guitar, and what sounded like flute or something, and then the guitar went, da -da 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 then the flute went something like, da -da 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 I guess I don't know. I have a story about someone I met. Beautiful. I have a story about a guy um, that I met. Um, when I was doing a shoot, who actually knows you? Uh huh. I don't know. I don't remember his name. I couldn't tell you for the life of me. But he's a firefighter here in Missoula, and um, he was like, "Oh, you know Emmett?" I was like, "Uh, yeah, Emmett." I was like, "Yeah, I went to high school with Emmett." He's like, "You did?" I was like, "Yeah." He's so different now than he ever was in high school. <laughs> oh yeah, I wasn't a punk rock or anything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> But see, that works for you, yeah. though. Yeah, that, definitely. That's your, that is your personality. Yeah. And it's I mean, and, for you. And then, like, uh, I mean, like, I talked to him a little bit about it, and it's like, and he's always just like, yeah, there's always somebody in this town that has a story about Emmett. That they know him <laughs> Interesting. Him sometime in, in his life, for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I guess Emmett's, like, <laughs> legend around here. <laughs> I graduated from high school in Sentinel in 1986. Okay. Yeah. I don't even remember. I remember my high school, but I just don't uh, remember most of the people there. No. Well, after all these years, I don't think yeah. I would remember anybody in my high school class. Yeah, from, what, yeah, I remember a few. Years? Yeah. yeah, I graduated in '76. So yeah. I graduated in '76. I was just whenever I bring any like kids here. I mean, like cause, uh, sometimes I do after. I mean, like with my after school programs, I bring kids here. And um, on Thursday, I brought a couple times to ASAP show, uh -huh. and like a couple kids always be like, "Oh yeah, you're the one guy from the mall." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or yeah. Patty Creek Market. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that's a label that sticks with me. I guess. <laughs> But yeah, I guess you want to have a label, you want to have something to stick sure. with. With me, it's the mall and exactly. the market. Yeah. Emmett is his yeah. uh, personality and his yeah. shows and yeah. so on. Yeah, exactly. he just walks around in his leather jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm no longer a punk rocker. I had to retire because I can't slam dance anymore, but I still can wear the jacket. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
So yeah, wow. yeah, image, image, the big reason why people, more people started watching the cafe yeah. Yeah. because of sure. you know. Sure. So I'm glad, thankful for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did you go to many raves when you were? Raves? Yeah. I never went to He's raves. He's not a rave school. guy. He's no. a punk rocker. Punk rocker. Yeah, yeah, a mosh pit? Yeah, I love mosh, mosh pit. pit. Oh, okay. the <laughs> raves are too dangerous. I don't do really? drugs and I don't do... I didn't That's even a common misconception about oh, raves. Yeah. Raves are, are supposed to be high energy. Oh. And of course, there's the people who do do the drugs. Oh. But then it's supposed to be very just a lot of colors and a lot of bright lights. Mm. Yeah. I didn't even want to go to kegger parties. I knew they'd be trouble, and I didn't want to drink underage and be busted. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. You know? When a party uh, is preceded by kegger, then it's usually That's like, bad. you know it's going to be bad. <laughs> Definitely. <Yeah. laughs> Scott, you want to play a tune on the piano? Yeah, sure. <laughs> play, a, play a song here for us. There was a funny movie based kind of in, I think it was filmed 1976. It wasn't filmed there, but it was about 1976. It was called Dazed and Confused. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. That was it's, fun. Well, it was about high school down in Texas in that um, year, 1976, just kind of a comedy. Mm-hmm. And they had a finale. They went into a kegger party. They went had a kegger party in the wilderness somewhere. Of course, it went and became a disaster. Yeah, <laughs> sure. an absolute disaster. Especially Fights in breaking Texas, out and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeez. But yeah, it was just a coming of age movie, uh-huh. high school, and uh-huh. how they spent their summer vacation. Right. Uh, yeah, but it was funny, yeah, I mean, and I can relate to this. It's funny. It's definitely the way it was back then. You know? Did it have anything to do with Led Zeppelin's song? No, no. It was just dazed and confused oh, okay. from 1976. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you. You want to play a tune on the piano oh. for this guy? Even if you, I don't want to put you on the spot. If it's up to you. Oh, I haven't played in so long, and my nails are clicky. Oh yeah. So okay. just I thought. just play at home. That's about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, as a Catholic, I love my beer and wine. I just love oh, my sure. and imports and good sure. wine or good port or something. Yeah, I'm not Catholic and I love beer and wine. No, oh, definitely wine. Oh yeah, I love yeah. wine. Oh. And brandy. Yeah. I love brandy. Oh, I have a beautiful set of cut crystal brandy snifters, oh. and after dinner, I have about a finger. Wonderful. <gasps> so relaxing. There's one of these cookies I want to try. I want to yeah. try uh, yeah. that vanilla chocolate cookie. Oh one. yeah. Do you like sweet wine or dry? Dry. I like sweet. So I guess you don't like wouldn't like Moscato. No. And you probably wouldn't yeah. like port. I love port. I do wine. like port. I like I like the sherry. Port, the Montiardo, yeah, yeah. Ma- Madeira. Yeah. I love Madeira. Yeah. yeah definitely. Because that's sweet, you know. Yeah, it's sweeter. I'll have it as an aperitif sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I love wine and listen to like Gordon Lightfoot or Neil Diamond mm-hmm. or you know John Denver. It's perfect with those mm-hmm. or George Winston or something. Mm-hmm. You know, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I'll put on some jazz. I have about two hundred vinyl albums, uh-huh. and I'll put on that. some. Uh, jeez, who do I who do I play? There's a group called um, Les Freeman. He's an electric guitarist, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he has like an electronic kind of song album. And oh, okay. I'll play Milt Jackson. I'll play mm-hmm. Dick Morgan, the pianist. You know, I'll play you know, just straight edge jazz. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, but I found something interesting about my musical taste and how I pair it with alcohol. Uh huh. I can only, if I'm playing punk rock music, I can't drink wine. Really? Because yes. it's so it's mellow for easy yes. listening. It's either beer or like whiskey, whiskey or something, yeah. or mm-hmm. beer or rum. But yeah. if it's going to be easy listening, I'll put on some wine. And I, I can also put on drink some beer with easy listening. <laughs> or like, you know, John Denver, Neil Diamond, that's fine for beer, but yeah. You know what kind of uh, music I play? Um, well, I, when I used to drink, well, when I had wine, this is the kind of music I'd probably really like play. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just pass out. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why I don't drink. It just yeah. makes me tired. I Good. can't yeah, yeah, be definitely. tired. Yeah, I don't like yeah. to get out. Yeah, it's After yeah. work, you know, I'm home, I've had dinner, a little wine yeah. at dinner, you mm-hmm. know. How much time do we have left as far as our time? Oh, we're, we're, we've our, we're, very, we're near an hour already. Really? Just, yeah. I'm going to just let it run a little bit longer yeah, than normal. Sure. It's okay. Maybe stop at an hour and 15 minutes or something yeah. like that. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll know. Yeah. Let me check and see if anyone's here while you guys okay. are. Okay. So you prefer whites or reds? Um, I love whites and reds. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but there's no really competition as far as whites yeah, or reds, you know. It depends on, to me, it depends on what I'm eating. I pair yeah. it with food, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Like when I'm having a nice filet mignon, I've got to have a cabernet. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, cabernet is too dry for me. Really? All I said. Food is fun. I'm gonna get back to it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Scott, for yeah. being part of this. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, yeah, thanks, thanks. Unless it's fine. If it's fine cabernet. Yeah. 
Like at a wine tasting, that's different. It's oh. not too dry. Right. Mm -hmm. right. What about Malbecs? Have you tried Malbecs? Never heard of it. Oh, they're so good. Oh, no. Yeah, they're Argentine. Argentine. Is it a wine? Uh, yes, it's a Wonderful. Red, red, red wine. Argentine. Mm -hmm. Do you like Wine Spectator then? It's a magazine. I haven't, s I haven't seen it. Oh, it's wonderful. I used to try food and wine, but yeah. that's the American Express. Yeah. But, uh, it's, it's all about good. elegant wines, and they even rate the wines. Nice. And they're professionals at wine tasting, preparing the food, and they assemble different restaurants. Uh -huh. And the tasting notes are so uh, funny. It's like classic or very good. Uh -huh. This wine has excellent notes at the end, a little bit of tar, a little bit of honey, even some pencil shaving notes at the end. <laughs> a classic wine. Oh, Drip now. I mean, it is wow, hilarious. That's great. That's great. I love wine, wine ratings. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're, yes, yes. Excellent, yeah. Yes, I do. But it's I, do also, have a wine, I have a wine Bible. Oh, wine. wonderful. Yeah. It's also on the inter internet, um, let's see, what winespectator.com, and okay. you can see videos of people drinking oh, yeah. wine and pairing them and tasting it. I like this, this was very yeah. good. Wine, very interesting, uh -huh. I land That's wine nice. festivals. Yeah, I've been to a couple of wine tastings, I love them. Oh, same here. was with food, and we had filet mignon, oh, and we had lobster, yes. and oh my god, it was great. Are you talking about the ones that they used to have down here at the very fancy hotel out of for God for a camp make a dream? Um, I didn't know. I never been to one. I've been to one here, but that was at the Iron Horse. Oh, okay. And it was for the store. Okay. Because I was a wine steward for a while at, mm -hmm. at Safeway. Mm -hmm. But um, this was in California. Oh. And it was just marvelous. Somebody's house. Mm -hmm. And it was really, really good. Yeah, they used to have them down at a hotel, and I've forgotten the oh. name of it. Is it Holiday Inn or is it something else? I don't think so. It's a no Red Line oh, Double. Red. Oh, okay. Red. It wasn't. Was it Red Line or was it, it's one of those ones down here? I don't yeah. remember the name. They would have fundraisers for Camp Make a Dream, and mm -hmm. back then they were only like thirty to forty dollars. Oh, nice. Now they're a lot more. Yeah, they are. But I used to enjoy them. I'd always want to eat something at Thudder Records or something to make sure I, because I don't want to drink like that on a full stomach. True. But they would have a little wine, you know, just little wines in a glass um, like this. Oh, perfect uh -huh. prop. Right. And then, after you drink that, what they would do, there would be a carafe of water, so you could, you know, put that, and, and then just another, it wasn't wine swilling, it was wine right. tasting, just right. out there. And some food, they had some uh -huh. excellent gourmet food, and uh -huh. every time I ate or drank after one of those things, the next morning, I felt like I could do the work of ten men. <laughs> I felt so good, not hungover, but just right. ready to do any work. Healthy diet. It was amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have wine every night. Oh, wonderful, yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I like to have a good food. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Unless I'm having something like tacos or enchiladas. Oh, yeah. Then I want beer. Yeah. Or sangria. Yeah, sangria. Yeah. Hello. I thought you didn't like sweet wine. Well, sangria is very sweet. It is sweet, but it, it's fruity. It is. That's you know, what I mean. So, yes, yeah. very sweet. It's fruity. different than Moscato. Moscato tastes sugary to me. Yeah, I love Moscato. Yeah. yeah. But I, like I said, I like the ports and the sherries. Oh, and yeah. You know. Uh, so. Have you ever tried tonic water with port? It kind of has the bitter and the sweet. Yeah. If you like port, that's delicious. That's how I drink my port nowadays. Interesting. I'll have to try that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, folks, the reason we're not drinking on the set is because alcohol isn't allowed on the studio, and yeah. you know, I know you don't drink, and I wouldn't want to feel you to feel left out. Otherwise, but I don't think it's wrong to drink wine or exactly. you know, stuff like that. But yeah. no, we can't do that on set no. here. Yeah. So that's why the best, the closest we can come to any alcohol is when we have our secret ingredient. Yeah, the Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, really Pepsi. So yeah, definitely, definitely. And do you like hard drinks besides whiskey? Um, what other hard drinks are there? I like brandy, but mm -hmm. uh, rum I like sometimes. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I love rum. Yeah. yeah. I also love martinis. Love martinis. Oh. I love martinis. Oh yes. yeah. Oh my goodness. I yeah. made, made, made one the other day for the first time in about six months, and mm. it was heavenly. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Louise, will you hand me the watch on your left? Oh sure. Yeah. I'm just keeping track of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going by so quickly. We've already done an hour oh, already. Wow. Can you believe that? That's oh. amazing. So That's I'm just gonna fast. let the camera room just talk some more and yeah. hang out and party a little bit longer, sure. a little bit longer. Okay. But um when do you want this particular episode to end or stop it or something? I'll know. <laughs> All right. And even if if we stop this, when those kids come, we can do another yeah. tape. You'll probably be gone, we can do another tape. Yeah. There's plenty of food. Yeah. This is only my second slice of pizza. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you haven't started yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> you only eat so much pizza and chips oh, and stuff like that's that. That's true. Yeah. Nice. Oh, let's see. Oh. Nice. I'm just trying to think of. Uh, oh, okay. This show start. Oh, you don't know the history of this show, do you, Emmett? 
Yeah, you had started this with No, but I mean prior prior to that, before that. No, no, I don't. When Luis and I were doing that pilot, uh -huh. mm -hmm. we had like three hours filming time, and we were doing that promo mm -hmm. leading up to the pilot, you know, mm -hmm. that hour promo. Right. Where we were telling people we were about to shoot this scene, uh, shoot this new uh, television mm -hmm. show, so we had three hours recording time, uh -huh. and, the, and the promo was only an hour. Mm -hmm. So at the very beginning, with just those two brick walls, I just blurted out, "Welcome to ASAP oh, Cafe." Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you no, know, because we had that table. Uh -huh. You know, Luis was sitting on one side, the piano was yeah. on the other side. It was yeah. just literally just two brick walls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after we did that promo, we had like a couple hours recording time. I said, let's just do an ASAP cafe yeah, and see sure. what happens. Yeah. That's how That's this whole thing started. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. That's how it yeah. started. It was an accidental blurting out, right. unplanned. Right. Then we did that. After we did the promo, we did like, I think it was like another hour or something like uh -huh. that, if I recall. And then it worked. Yeah. Then we did it, turned it into a television series. Yeah. That's, That's how it got started. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Way before Emmy came along. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. By the way, I hate to say it, if you're going to still film or whatever, i got to check on some things at home, and a friend of mine invited me to his place. Um, do you mind if I just sign off the credits, sign a surreal joke, and just leave? I sure, hope I, I, no, that's not yeah, going to be no, 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 no. I'd have to take the watch back if I put it on. But <laughs> that's okay. I have a watch. All right. Well, folks, it's been fascinating, and yeah. let me know if you decide to put the show on hiatus for a I'll while. let you know. I'll, I'll, <coughs> I'll let you know. Somehow. I don't know. But I may tape one more show next week, <coughs> too, so I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. Because I've been, like I said, I, I've been doing this for almost four years. Mm -hmm. Time flies, and yeah. I just need a break. Yeah. Definitely. Well, the first surreal joke I ever told on this show, and this first one I ever told on the awful <laughs> truth about society, just sign up. Let's see, um, there were these two washing machines, and they <laughs> saw a hat in their way. One said to the other, is that in your way? And the other said, no, it's in your way, and it's blocking my view. <laughs> <coughs> Plus, my voice is kind of giving out anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> well Emmett, thanks for being part of this uh, 200 you. celebration okay. there. Loved it. Thank you. Thank you. But I'll keep you posted on what's going to be going on in the future. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep you posted. So, um, our aging rocker <laughs> is leaving us. You can just throw that out. Yeah. Well, there, you don't have a cup, though. What? I, I can get another one. That right. might have, I don't remember. I can get another one. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, thanks. So, I guess I'll recycle this Coke can and let you say it, guys. Okay. Take some more goodies. You yeah, have a good one. Because once those kids get here, later, this is going to all be gone when they get yeah. here. Yeah. There's something like three or four or five high school kids. Oh. They'll go yeah. through that pizza once yes, they get they here. Yes, they will. See ya. Okay, all see right, you Emma, later, thanks Emma. again. Thanks. Well, I'll just talk to you for a little bit. Sounds right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> wow, I just, this is so cool that MCAT would do this. I know. <laughs> this little celebration here. I don't have to have lunch today. That's right. Stuff like that. Sounds good. I've been working on that fantasy impromptu. Let me do it in slow motion. Have you? Yeah, I have. I'll do it in slow motion. Now watch me not be able to do it. <laughs> Let me do it again. That's a difficult piece. I know. I'm, it's just hard to do it on this keyboard, too. Mm. And I'm going to demonstrate this. I think I did this before. My My... Right hand will have four taps, and my mm -hmm. left hand three. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. it okay. It's hard to do it on this ear. I had to memorize this first. Mm -hmm. Just for that part, yeah. I still memorize that. Nice. It's going to take me at least a year or two. Oh, yeah. It's going to take me a while because sure. I still have to memorize all Oh, I that, know. You know. And coordinate it. Yeah. That, for just... me, is the problem with a lot of new piano tunes is coordinating both hands. And you have to start off slowly and try to... Yeah, I do it very slow yeah. for, you know, however long I do. Yeah.
part of the country <laughs> too. Just gotta get used to it. I know. It just it just really takes a little getting used to. Sure it. Let's does. Try it again. Beautiful song it though. Is. It made it into a popular song. Yeah. yeah. I keep forgetting my fingers, see, that's mm -hmm. the thing. There we go. Oh, missed that note. Something like that. Mm -hmm. starts over, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'll get um, used to it. Yeah. But at least that's how far I got since good. I told you I was first working Yeah, good for you. It's the memorization process I that's know. the hardest. Well, when I was doing that last chord, I didn't even remember. I was a teenager when I learned it, mm -hmm. and I must have been a couple weeks, easy. Yeah. You know, just to guess. And I'd known the song because my mom used to play it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I knew the melody, basically, but it's finding it, you know. Yeah, and then I not only want to learn it by touch memorization, but I want to have it where I can see it in my mind's eye yeah. and just get it. So yes. that's a song that I don't think I'll ever really attempt to do publicly mm -hmm. in a performing setting till mm -hmm. it's like... Oh, it has to be perfect. Second yeah. nature. There yeah. can't be so much as an inkling of a know. mistake on that. Yeah, that's true. And these people that do that, they probably spend hours and probably years perfecting oh, yeah. that, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. You just play it over and over and over and over until it's just set in your mind. Yeah, and I'm still going through the memorization process, yeah. but kind of happy I got that far. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, when it, with me, reading music is very, very, very slow. Mm -hmm. You know, I can read it, but I have to, like, see that chord and then find <laughs> it, and then look at that chord and then yeah. find it, you know. Uh -huh. Oh, it's awful. My mom could sight read. She was great. Some people can't. She could just take a piece of music, sit down and go, blah, 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 you know. And I'm increasing my classical repertoire, so about a year from now, I should be very comfortable, you know, like yeah. that, uh, that uh, um, nocturne. Mm -hmm. some feeling into oh, it. Oh, of course. It's very emotional. Something like that, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm working on all those. Good for you. And trying to memorize them. The, the hardest thing, I don't think, is the song. is the memorization. Yes. And what fingers. Right. You know, you got to use. And, uh, yeah. So it's just, these songs have been giving me a fit. <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> and that song may not be as technical as that fantasy impromptu, but yes, there's still, still a degree of difficulty because that yes. left hand is bouncing. No. And I used to get dizzy when I was first... <clears throat> Doing that, I'm really? starting to get a little used to it now. Oh wow, yeah, so, waltzes are hard for me, you know, just to get the one, two, three hand, with the left hand, yeah. and then incorporate the right. It's just, they're difficult for me, mm -hmm. so I don't do yeah. many. So I'm I'm working on a bunch yeah. of those uh, tunes. Let's see yeah. if I can. I don't have my Chopin book with me, so I can't oh, that's really. Okay. Uh, Chopin, I love Chopin because it's so good for dance. Yeah, you know, yeah. For, especially for ballet, you know. You see, um, this is a, one of the preludes. You recognize? Oh, yes, I play that. I'm working on that yeah, one, too. Yeah, that one I do know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a prelude of B minor. Yes, it is. That. Yeah. It is. And there was just some other... Oh, wow, I'm on a spot I can't even think. You were here, I'd be thinking of all right here. <laughs> 
Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, and then the nocturne in uh, F sharp. Oh, right. So it's gonna take me a while. Oh yeah. We're trying to memorize all these are all new songs to me. Right. You know? Right. I just yeah, I haven't to tried to play anything new in years. I remember number one, I haven't had time. Yeah. And number two, my piano needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> and, but yeah, yeah. I just you know, I have fun with it. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, I don't take it like serious, serious. I I mean I, I take the practice serious, mm -hmm. but I just have fun with it. Oh, yeah. If I get to the point where I'm really comfortable, mm -hmm. I'll start doing it more regularly there and you stuff go. like there that. There you go. It's the coordination, like you say. That's yeah, a big that, thing. Yeah, and the memorization yeah, for me. Yeah, that happens with dance. I remember one jazz teacher taught us a jazz routine with a lot of arms in it. And the right arm would move in three directions, and the left arm moved in two directions, uh -huh. and then you had to do them both together. And that was definitely challenging. I'm getting used to this <clears throat> one now. Sugar Plum? Yeah. yeah. See, I've been working all mm -hmm. that out. I'm, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with that. Good. That's one of the most difficult, shortest, and most difficult ballet routines. Yeah, I can Very imagine, good. especially that middle part here. Well, that's actually <coughs> a part where you can rest in the dance. See? <coughs> but the next part gets difficult. Yeah. Yeah. That's difficult for the piano player, but for the dancer, it's kind of a rest thing. Yeah, that, that, that oh, part's pretty tricky. Yeah. <coughs> <clears throat> My goodness, excuse me. This part is difficult for the dancer. For the dancer. Yeah, for the dancer. You notice my left hand is doing that, that. Uh huh. And then uh -huh. when you put it together, it yeah. It just, yeah. I know. That took. I at first when I was first doing, it, I was like, I don't want to do that second part. I'm just gonna do the second part like the first part, but then that wouldn't be correct. No, so. way. no way. So you have yeah. to do it right. Yeah. That part of the dance is a step called Padisha, which means step of the cat, uh -huh. where you jump, one knee comes up, and then you jump onto the other knee comes up, and then you land. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. and you do that one, and then you go up on both toes, and then you do another one, and go up on both toes, and then you do uh, mm -hmm. kind of a, a PK arabesque in the part of the ray. So yeah. you do that three separate sets. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. It's very tiring. I've done it so many times, and yeah, it's yeah. very tiring to be so short. Well, that's what I'm. I'm just working on. Well, this good. Stuff. Yeah, I wish I had time, or I could make time to play more. This is the mazurka. Uh, I think in A minor. Hmm. It goes something like this. Ah. You recognize that? That really. That they use that song. I think it's in the uh, uh, 
uh, the pianist film with Adrian oh. Brody. I think oh. that song's. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Okay. But yeah, there's just so many of these new songs I'm working on, and wow. I'm just getting familiar yeah. with them at this point. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great. So about a year or so from now, I hope to be all comfortable with all those ones yeah. I tried to demonstrate just now. Yeah. I'm gonna get the impromptu more than a year. Sure. Just now. Sure. But God, those chords and oh, are beautiful. I know they are. <laughs> I lost That's it. That's okay. That's all right. But I'm working on it. Yeah. The right hand is easier than the left hand. Right. Oh, the definitely. Left hand has always. Those triplets. I know. I want to do there. I know. That's always been harder for me. Just makes, makes you wonder what was Chopin thinking. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna play a song that's gonna be so hard. <laughs> now only me can play it. Uh, I've said things on Mozart, but not on Chopin. When I do the right hand by my can, I can do it. Sure. Pretty though. Mm -hmm. See how far I can go. Isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. Uh, I saw him on a on a game show of black and white film mm -hmm. clip when he was very young, mm -hmm. and he said he practiced up to seven eight hours a day. Wow, growing up, yeah, that There's, would explain why yeah. he got so good exactly. at such a young you age. To. You know, I mean, you know, you, you figure you're living at home, you're growing up, you don't have to uh, pay rent mm -hmm. or get a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he got his first job at 19 oh, in the Chicago Symphony. Oh, okay. They said he just practiced as a kid. Yeah. He just practiced and. And it showed, I finally got to see that movie, South Sea Center with Shelley oh, Myers. Oh, really? They finally posted that movie, and oh. I looked at it. Uh -huh. And Liberace was probably in his early 20s in this Ooh. film. And I'm like, holy cow, <laughs> where did he get this guy from? My goodness. Because this Liberace in this movie is not the Liberace the world went on Right, to know. right. No candelabras. Uh, no. Nothing. That, that all came later. Yeah. Yeah. But the just the skill came. at that yeah. age in his life. He yeah. was doing that. Let's see, what was that song? There was a scene where he was in the bar with Shelly Winters mm -hmm. and he was talking and people were coming in. And he was, he did that, um, and what a long show fan piece. It's in G minor. Um, mm -hmm. The one that goes something like this. Well, he played that in the in the film part mm -hmm. of it too, and it was like, wow. It was almost like it was a different person. I bet. Because you know he's younger and yep. just really practiced just, yeah, stuff. Focused, yeah, focused. Yeah, focused. Yeah. And he did some uh, 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 list piece in there too, mm -hmm. for those guys in the bar. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, just. But he did eat on that uh, game show. They asked him how often he practiced, and he said he just practiced every day. Wow. Seven to eight hours every day. That's amazing. That's and you know when people practice that many hours, it's not in one setting. You have right. to you have to break, break it, it off. Yeah. And you accumulate that time. Right. With the with the hours. Oh wow. But that's that would explain how yeah. he got so good no so young. No kidding. Yeah. Jeez. Same with Oscar Peterson. They said the same oh, thing about yeah. him. When he was growing mm -hmm. up, they had like family members, mm -hmm. sisters, or whatever he mm -hmm. had at the time. That's all that guy did was sat in front of that piano practicing scales all day and drive everybody nuts. <laughs> they said Oscar just practiced scales and scales and just kept at it. Yeah, you got to keep the finger work, you know, the fingers limber and you know. Yeah, he just kept at yeah. it. And 
That's great. The rest that's is great. history. Yeah. Oh, that's my phone. Oh, who didn't answer? You sure? Yeah. On camera? Yeah, who didn't answer? Cafe. That's a Vivaldi, isn't it? Four Seasons? Yes. Who's calling me? Hello? <laughs> I didn't catch it. We can call it back, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I don't care. It wasn't my girlfriend, so that's fine. Right. Yeah. Something like that. That's the one. Yeah. That's your ringtone, huh? Yep. That's Vivaldi. I've only heard one other person that had it. I, mean, it's I don't know the name of the song, but I know that's Vivaldi. It's, the, it's from the Spring, Four I think, from the Four Seasons. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was Four Seasons. Yeah. Not Frankie Valley's either. No. <laughs> well, I won't do this on camera. Okay, well, that's okay. I can sign off here. Uh, let me just double check one last thing, see if anyone else is here. Okay. As far as the kids, and then we'll just sign off and talk. And okay. Let those kids gobble up that pizza. Yeah, really. You guys want to come in and say hi on camera for a moment? And have some pizza? Plenty of them. Yeah, there's pizza. I'm there's fine. plenty of them. There's already good ones here. Might as well come on in and say hi real quick. I'll just get ready to sign off. I was waiting for you guys to show up. Have a seat, guys. There's a pizza over there. There's all the goodies over here. You guys will gobble it all up. <laughs> now, I was waiting for these guys to come in. Uh -huh. These are the young guys I was telling you about that have been helping me with the show. This oh. is our 200th episode of the cafe today. Have a seat. <laughs> Grab some food. Have a seat. I'll talk for about five or ten more minutes and uh, sign off. Sweet, thanks. I and mean, you guys can just take this food and devour it all day long. <laughs> Dude, no problem with that. <laughs> now, tell me your name again. Uh, John. John? Mm -hmm. Jackson. Jackson, this is okay. Luis and I'm ASAP. Hello. Hello. Some of the other kids have been in here, they, uh, they've been helping with the show. I'm going to probably put it on hiatus for a few months after today. Because I want to focus on those news stories that I've been doing. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got to apply for Good Morning America recently because of the studio. That's great. Well, I'm going to give it two years. You know the odds that that happened? <laughs> <laughs> it took months for me to get this opportunity just to apply for that show. Right. And I don't know, Daddy could be like, hey, Safu, and probably <laughs> look at it for like five seconds. Uh, I sent, well, see, ABC sent me, uh, They. I, I had been doing those news stories, you know, the ASAP Five Night stories, and uh, ABC contacted me. So I sent them two DVDs of my news stories that I've been doing. And, uh, that's where they'll probably just look at it for like a couple of seconds. They're probably like, oh, this kid's all right. He's good. <laughs> and they'll go out and do their thing and forget yeah. about me for you another year. Know. You know, who knows? You never know. Yeah. 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 But if I do get this opportunity, I've got it well planned. Mm -hmm. Now, this show here, this is just, a, you can see our backdrop here. This is just a little uh, cafe. Yeah. It's impromptu. impromptu People come sure. in. Cool. Cool. They talk to me as I play the piano, you know, that Sinatra oh, nice. dinner music and stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> and like Briar and some of the other guys have been coming in, sitting in with me. Awesome. So you guys are here, and this is the 200th episode of this show. 200. Nice. 200. Yeah. ASAP Cafe. Great. So Joel just said, hey, let's have a party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the second highest producer here in this whole, <laughs> second only, only to him, but only yeah. because he's been here longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Cool. I think he's up to like 500. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of shows. Episode, yeah, with this yeah. show. It's intense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but see how I got away with it in such a short time is because I had one time I was doing two tapings a week. Wow. And that starts building up real fast. Yeah. It's tapering down now because it gets harder to keep that momentum going, getting people yeah. twice a week. Yeah. yeah. You guys make yourself here at home. Let me, uh, here's some soda. I'm going to try to grab some other recruits in here real quick. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So do you guys do the tech stuff around here, or what do you do? Actually, we, um, well, this is his first time here, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, our other friend, Owen, and I, we do the flagship here on the on Tuesdays. Oh, okay. And we're, we're kind of writing stuff for our own show, but we don't actually really work here. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I mostly play music with uh, Nice. Jackson. That's pretty cool. You know Luis, don't you? I, I do not. No, hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> Tell me your name again. Um, Jack. That's right. Yeah. Well, you can sit next to her, too. Yeah, okay. sure. How about the pizza's back over here? I, I basically got this stuff for you guys. I knew you guys were coming today. I wasn't going to take this home, so just help yourself. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty. There's two big pizzas. There's plenty, really. I only had two pieces. Yeah. Go help yourself if you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get some chips. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to get going pretty soon. Yeah, I'm going to sign off in a yeah, few minutes here. I just 15. wanted to share those last few moments with sure, these young guys here. Sure, sure. Stuff like that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you guys are pretty cool with computers. <laughs> How do you think oh, I've been getting these good bank jobs for this cafe lately? <laughs> 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 Included this bank job for Ron right yeah, now. Yeah, oh, that's great. You. Neil, you want to come in and say hi real quick? We're getting ready to sign off. Want to get on camera and say hi real quick? <laughs> yeah, really. You guys just take this stuff home. Just have as much soda. Go for it. Just on this camera. All right, that's fine. Neil, uh, <laughs> Neil here has been doing the switching cameras back and forth. In fact, he'll probably sign off with us. Come on in. All right, all right. Might as well. <laughs> it's that camera that can always sign off there. Yeah. But, you know, as I stated, I, I, I basically got these goodies for you guys. I knew you were coming today, and just want you to help me to eat this. Yeah. Clean it up. Yeah. This old man Celebrate. here, don't eat two pieces. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so can you believe it? I'm going to be 60 years old this year. Oh, you're just yeah, ancient. Well, I, know, I realize that <laughs> compared to some people, but yeah. it's amazing. It's a tough one. That, that was a hard one for me. 60? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why, because, you know, 70 Probably because so that's bad, that transition when you're getting into middle age to be It just old. sounds old. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, was saying, I was guessing mid-30s. Good for you. No, <laughs> I'm, I'll be 60 this year. Yeah. I'll be 73 this year. I've pretty much done everything <laughs> I've always wanted to do in my life. I mean, I was in Vegas when I was you guys' age. Yeah. I played there a long time. <laughs> but that was, what, 30 years ago? <laughs> yeah, least. really. Wait, wait, you're 73? Well, you look younger than my dad, and he's in his 60s. Oh, you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Must be all the dancing. I was used to be a ballerina. Mm. <laughs> Well, see, you guys probably won't know him. Uh, Little Richard's manager, you know the singer, mm -hmm. Little Richard? Yeah. His manager was my teacher. No So way. that's how I got started mm -hmm. because of that. Well, that's really cool. I was 20 yeah. years old when I studied with Bumps Blackwell. Wow. I trained with him for three years before oh, wow. I went to Vegas. Cool. So I was prepared at yeah. that time. Right? No I was kidding. like wow. 20, I was like, come on in. <laughs> We're just having a little party real We're quick. We're taking a tour, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I was something like uh, 25 or 26 mm -hmm. when I first started playing in, in Las Vegas. And I played with a group called Pat Gittery and the High Rollers. I was like a musician <laughs> in the background. Uh, I did all the background music. That was a good gig. I'm sure, especially in Vegas. Yeah, and then yes. this was on the main strip, too, at that time. Nice. It was the uh, Marina Hotel next to the Tropicana, you know, the, yeah. the main strip. On the main drag, I yeah. That played in Vegas twice. Cool. Wow. Before I was like 32 years yeah. old at that time. That's Wait, saying a lot. What, while you were in Vegas, what was it like your favorite show like that you played? Well, I wasn't doing solo stuff then. I well, was yeah, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But so. working with Pat Gittery, that was so cool. Because mm -hmm. he would, he, this guy was like on the, uh, playing at the Riviera. I think Celine yeah, Dion sings there yeah, now, but yeah. at the time, you know. And big name hotels. Yeah, yeah, his name was on a marquee with people Night. like Tom Jones. You oh. probably don't know Tom Jones. Yeah. It's not <laughs> no. unusual. You guys are young. Yeah. But so these we, were different we performers. We've been performers in the past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, my boss was, used to, was on the marquee with those kind of performers yeah. at that time. Nice. Now it's the baby of the bunch. <laughs> you know, these guys are like in their 30s and 40s. And I was yeah. only in my 20s. Yeah. So. yeah. And now I'm 6 0. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those guys are retired. I mean, they made their zillion dollars, however right. much they made in Vegas yeah. at that time. So Lynn Dion, she makes like three hundred million a year. I'm sure. Yeah, it's Imagine crazy. That? It's crazy. Wow. I can't How even count that, that high. Much money? I know. <laughs> you probably don't. You probably do a lot of yeah. charity work. And I would think a lot of donations. Hope. Building right. hotels yeah. for AIDS patients. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> and anyway, we're gonna have to go. Yeah. 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 Well, let's sign out. All okay. right, guys. I just have you going on a real bit of sign out, and thanks for being part of this two hundred cafe at the spur of the moment. Just introduce yourselves on, on mm -hmm. camera. Which camera? Is that camera there? That camera, yeah. 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 Go ahead, Zach. Uh, Jack Camel. Louise Bundy. I'm Neil Wells. I'm Jackson Sproul. John Snowdrift. And I am ASAP Adam Knight, so uh, we'll just sign out here. And uh, any final words any of you want to say? Go down here. Before I <laughs> sign up, I'm going to get on camera here since we're using one camera. Okay. Guys here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Any final words any of you want to say before we sign off? Go Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs>
Congrats. Yeah, I was going to say congrats. 200, yeah. Yeah, well, well, thank congratulations, thank you. definitely. And I have to thank uh, Neil and all of you guys and all the people <laughs> that worked on the backdrops, uh, Briar and all the rest, did that voice at the bottom of the right, sea. So, uh, right, right. Okay. And Neil came up with this cafe here yeah, today. Yeah, that was pretty nice. Well, this is the 200th episode on Maysaf Cafe, so until the next show, Maranatha. <laughs> <laughs> all done. Bye. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right, I'll go, I'll go uh, cut to you. All right. Will you guys take all these goodies and help yourself? I just take a quick jump to the I'm talking about that.